Launching a rocket is one of the hardest feats to achieve in science and engineering, but there's one challenge that surpasses even the launch, landing a rocket. This is mainly due to the high speeds, the need for precise navigation, and the brutal atmospheric re-entry conditions. A rocket returning to Earth must decelerate from speeds that can exceed Mach 25, and this requires precise control over its engines and aerodynamic surfaces. This deceleration must be timed perfectly to ensure the rocket slows down enough to make a controlled landing. Then there's the issue of atmospheric re-entry. The rocket must endure extreme heat due to friction with the atmosphere, which can heat the surface of the rocket to around 1,650 degrees Celsius. This requires robust heat shields that add weight and complexity to the design. The landing itself requires the rocket to execute a series of controlled burns to slow down and touch down precisely at a landing spot. It's ironic that despite many rocket companies and organizations like NASA launching rockets since the 1950s, it was a newcomer like SpaceX that first successfully achieved the idea of landing and reusing rockets. Traditionally, space agencies around the world treated rockets as expendable items. A typical launch involved using the rocket to propel payloads into orbit, after which the rocket components would generally fall back to Earth and be destroyed or lost in the ocean. For decades, this method was accepted as the norm due to the immense technical challenges and costs associated with trying to recover and reuse these massive structures. The focus was on ensuring the payload reached orbit rather than the fate of the rocket itself. However, when Musk founded SpaceX in 2002, he approached space travel from a different angle. He saw these traditional methods as wasteful and a huge barrier to making space travel more accessible. SpaceX began testing its reusability concept with the Falcon 1, but the major breakthrough occurred in 2015, when they successfully landed the first stage of the Falcon 9 on a landing pad at Cape Canaveral. This was followed by the first successful landing on a drone ship in April 2016. Although SpaceX has successfully landed Falcon rocket boosters, it's important to note that these rockets are not fully reusable. The Falcon system typically recovers only the first stage, while the second stage and other components are not designed for recovery and reuse. This is why SpaceX is focusing more on the development of the Starship. Unlike the Falcon rockets, Starship aims to have both its stages, the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship spacecraft, return to Earth and be reused. The Starship system works in two main parts, the Super Heavy booster and the Starship spacecraft. The Super Heavy lifts the spacecraft into orbit and then returns to land on Earth, similar to how the Falcon 9's first stage operates. Currently, SpaceX is focusing on perfecting the recovery of the Super Heavy booster. Once they have reliably achieved this, the next phase will involve working on recovering and reusing the Starship main stage. Recovering the Super Heavy booster of the Starship is way more challenging than landing the smaller Falcon rockets. The Starship is almost double the size of the Falcon 9, making its recovery double as difficult. So, traditional methods like those used for the Falcon boosters aren't suitable due to the Starship's scale and mass. To solve this, SpaceX has introduced the Mechazilla Arm, a new system designed to catch the Super Heavy booster upon its return to Earth, eliminating the need for splashdowns or traditional ground landings. This new method requires a precise sequence of events to be successful. The process starts with the booster separating from the Starship after launch. It then performs a boost-back burn to adjust its trajectory back towards the launch site. About a minute after this burn, the engines shut down as the booster enters a transonic phase, preparing for the final descent. At around six minutes post-launch, the booster reignites its engines for a landing burn, slowing it down as it nears the landing pad. The engines cut off once the booster aligns over the Mechazilla arm, where it must be caught by the arm's chopstick-like mechanisms. This phase requires highly accurate navigation to ensure the booster lands precisely on the Mechazilla arm. Managing the booster's fuel is a critical aspect of the return journey. The booster must retain enough fuel for navigation and adjustments during its final approach. Running out of fuel too early would lead to mission failure. The navigation system also faces significant challenges due to the precision required for a direct Mechazilla arm landing. 
Wind and other atmospheric conditions can affect the trajectory, requiring the navigation system to perform flawlessly. To prepare for this complex landing method, SpaceX plans to use a virtual tower system to simulate the Mechazilla arm in upcoming tests. This will allow the team to practice the landing maneuvers in a controlled environment. Protecting the launch infrastructure is also crucial. Repeated landings can pose risks to the launch pad and its systems. SpaceX may need to adjust the landing angle or utilize the Mechazilla arm in specific ways to minimize impacts and protect its equipment. In the next couple of Starship launch tests, SpaceX doesn't plan to use the Mechazilla catching arms. Given the complexities and the potential risks, any problems during the catch attempt could lead to possible damage to the launch tower. Instead, SpaceX will focus on testing other important technologies, such as moving propellant from one tank to another inside the Starship. This test is vital for long-duration missions where refueling in space is needed. They'll also test the opening and closing of a payload bay door, crucial for satellite deployment missions. The Raptor engines, which power the booster, are another focus. Ensuring these engines perform reliably is crucial, as past flights have shown that even small malfunctions can disrupt the landing process. SpaceX conducts extensive testing, including static fires and wet dress rehearsals, to ensure the engines are flight-ready. After the tests, instead of attempting a landing with the Mechazilla arms, the Super Heavy booster is planned to splash down in the ocean. The goal during all the past three Starship launch attempts so far was to achieve a splash down in the ocean, but none of the launches have gone as planned. The initial Starship test flight ended in failure shortly after takeoff. The integrated Starship and Super Heavy rocket successfully launched but encountered a problem with stage separation. This malfunction led to an explosive outcome. The second Starship test flight aimed to build upon the first, but also ended in failure. This time, both the Super Heavy booster and the Starship upper stage experienced issues independently. These separate failures led to the destruction of the rocket before completing its intended flight profile. This flight marked a slight advancement as it managed to execute some planned maneuvers before failing. During this flight, the Super Heavy booster performed a boost-back burn and aimed for a splashdown near the launch pad. Unfortunately, the booster experienced a failure during its landing burn, resulting in an explosion just 462 meters above the ocean's surface. SpaceX is now planning to launch the fourth Starship test as early as May. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.